So we are discussing chemical bonding and in which we are discussing lattice energy. Well, understand that this chapter, if you wanted to have a proper perception about this chapter, please understand that, you know, a bond is a force and you must visualize a bond to be a force. Whatever perception you had earlier, please divorce it. And remember that a bond is a force and force is no single in chemistry. You have several forces. You have an ionic force, you have a metallic force, you have an induced force, right? You have a covalent force. Similarly, we have several types of what? Bonds. And what we are dealing with is an ionic bond, right? And most of the ionic compounds are solids, right? When ionic compounds are solids, we were told that they attain a definite shape, right? And we are discussing about what? The shapes of ionic compounds. And what I wanted to tell you very clearly is, when an ionic crystal is crystallized in the laboratory, right? When you are crystallizing an ionic solid in the laboratory, they attain a particular shape. Remember that I am not preparing the shapes according to my choice. Understand that. And also, ionic compounds are basically made up of ions. Ionic compounds basically are made up of ions. So the fundamental particles that are existing in ionic compounds are ions. Right? So when an ionic substance is crystallized in the laboratory, it will attain a definite shape. Right? And those shapes, you know, they, they are automatically sitting in those positions. These ions which are forming the fundamental particles of ionic compounds, they are sitting in specific positions and I am not doing it with my choice. They automatically sit and settle in such, such certain positions. And what are such positions are the best positions. When I say best positions, I am referring to lesser repulsions among the ions and more attractions, you must understand. Right? So, a crystal will be fixed or the shape will be fixed and the ions will be occupying certain positions in an ionic substance and that's when you know you will have minimum repulsions and maximum attractions. When these ions are sitting such that they are experiencing minimum repulsions and maximum attractions, that is where the maximum energy is lost from the system. When it's lost from the system, that's when the, 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 the lattice is stable or the shape is what stable. So understand that I'm not preparing any shapes. I'm not asking anyone to go and sit in a particular position in ionic compounds. I'm not forcing a cation and an anion to attain a particular shape. So when you are basically preparing an ionic solids, these ions are basically sitting in certain positions and that positions are the positions where they experience minimum repulsions and maximum attractions and minimum repulsions and maximum attractions will ensure that greater energy is lost from the crystal and that's when they attain that shape and that shape becomes stable or fixed for certain what? compounds, you must understand that. So, so we were discussing about ionic solids and lattice. And remember that lattice, right, it is basically an infinite arrangement. It's an infinite arrangement. It's a 3D arrangement, right, and repeating arrangement, right, it's a repeating arrangement and it's a regular arrangement, right? You must understand, what is a lattice? It's a regular, three-dimensional, repeating, infinite arrangement of, uh, of ions in ionic solids. You must understand, because in ionic solids are made up of what? Ions, and these ions are arranging themselves regularly, repeating itself and three-dimensional arrangement, and you have this infinite arrangement of these atoms in space. This we call it to be what? A space lattice, right? But remember that, Remember that we can't speak in infinite terms. So, so what I've done is, you know, I take a one unit of uh, this lattice and the simplest sample, we call it to be unit cell. So these two are synonymous. These two are basically synonymous, lattice and unit cell, both are synonymous, right? And how do we define this is the simplest sample. The simplest sample of a lattice is basically a unit cell. So simplest sample of a lattice is basically a unit cell, you must understand, 
right so i'm not speaking you know we can't speak in infinite arrangements and all in the space lattice so what i do is i come down to a simplest unit or the simplest sample and whatever we speak of the simplest sample will be that means that we are speaking of what lattice i was explaining in fact i was telling you that it's a, it's a brick of a wall a brick can be called as a simplest sample and the shape of the brick will be the shape of the wall and when when it moves through what a regular distances are equal distances are repeated repeatedly when you actually move through equal distances it generates the shape of the entire lattice that's what is the discussion and this entire discussion is cropping up because the ionic compounds mostly are solids and solids have definite shapes and the shapes we refer them to lattices and the lattice is basically is nothing but a regular three dimensional infinite arrangement of ionic solids repeating themselves and you generate the shape of the entire lattice right so from now onwards we'll actually divorce the term lattice and get into what the simplest sample that is a unit cell and i was telling you that this unit cell can be several types and mostly it is fcc and the bcc it's a face centered cube and a body centered cube so unit cell can be two types face centered cubes and body centered cubes right and the best example of attaining this particular shape is basically will be formed by NaCl and this is basically formed by KCl you must understand so it's a face centered cube and a body centered cube that's what we have remember one point remember one point if someone is asking what is FCC and what is BCC you tell them that it's nothing but unit cells and what is a unit cell? Unit cell is the simplest sample of that particular lattice, right? So whatever we speak of unit cell, we are basically speaking for what? Lattice, you must understand that, right? So yeah, I was giving you details of uh, FCC. Let us quickly brief what we have done and then we can move ahead. Observe carefully here. This is the face centered cube, right? And you know, this is what it is. The best example for this is NaCl. And in the face centered cube, this FCC is nothing but the unit cell. Right in the unit cell of FCC, where the sodium chloride when crystallized in the laboratory will attain the shape of what? Face centered cube. Now we wanted to know the positions of the sodium ions and chloride ions in this FCC. That is the discussion. So what we do is this Na plus ions are basically occupying occupying edge centers edge centers they are sitting at what edge centers you must understand and also they are sitting at the body centers right this so the position of the sodium is edge centers and body centers right and the Cl minus is basically sitting at face centered and corner points corner points you must understand corner points so basically understand that if 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 you say a unit cell is basically a simplest sample of a lattice then it is also understandable that you know a unit cell is not isolated it's not isolated it's basically surrounded by several other unit cells that is a critical point here so i would like to write it for you Remember that a unit cell, unit cell, right, is basically a simplest sample. If it is a simplest sample, then unit cell is never isolated. Is never isolated. You must understand. You can't isolate it, right? Since it is a simplest sample of the lattice, and unit cell is never isolated. So it implies that a lattice has a lattice has infinite number of unit cells. It has infinite number of what unit cells? You must understand. So unit cell is since it is the simplest sample, a particular unit cell cannot be isolated and put it in your pocket. It never happens, right? And remember that a lattice will be having infinite number of unit cells. Or simply speaking. A unit cell is surrounded, is surrounded by several other unit cells, other unit cells, you must understand. So you have an infinite number of what unit cells in a lattice, 
you have infinite number of what unit cells in a lattice and, and a unit cell is never isolated and a unit cell is surrounded by several other what unit cells you must understand that right if that is the case right so then what happens then what happens is these edge centered points these body centered points these face centered points these corner points these are the points which you have it in a cubic lattice in a cubic lattice, what are the four points which you will be encountering is basically you have edge centers, body centers, face centers and corner points. And when you say, when you say, I draw the attention please, try and understand what we are telling. Lattice is an infinite arrangement. Unit cell is the simplest sample of it. So a lattice will be containing infinite number of unit cells. It has infinite number of unit cells. That means that a unit cell is never isolated. A particular unit cell is never isolated. In fact, a unit cell is surrounded by several other unit cells. And also, a unit cell will be containing four types of points. One edge-centered, face-centered, body-centered, right, and corner points. So you have four types, edge-centered, body-centered, corner and face so the unit cells are having four types of this and when you say a unit cell is never isolated and it is surrounded by several other unit cells that also means that each point what we are speaking here does not belong to a particular unit cell it does not belong completely to a particular unit cell because a unit cell is actually surrounded by several other unit cells so Whatever points you're telling, edge-centered, body-centered, face-centered, and corner points, they don't completely contribute to one particular unit cell. In fact, all these points are shared by several other unit cells, except for the body-centered point where it is at the center of the lattice. It cannot be shared. It cannot be shared. So out of these four points, what we are discussing for a cubic lattice, right every point is shared by several other unit cells except except what the body centered point which stays at the center so look into the sequence what we are telling a lattice is an infinite arrangement right so we will divorce it because it has an infinite arrangement so we have taken a simplest sample of the lattice that is nothing but one unit cell it implies that a lattice will be having infinite number of what? Unit cells. Infinite number. That means that a unit cell can never be isolated. And a unit cell is surrounded by several other unit cells. And a unit cell will be having four types of points. Right? Four types of points. Except for body center, remaining all points are shared by what? Other unit cells. You must understand. Right? So what is the question? So what is the question? I would like to write the question which is asked in the exam. Watch carefully here. Look into the question what he is asking. Look into the question. The question which is asked in the JE is how many, how many one sodium ions comma Cl ion ions are present in one unit cell how many Na plus and Cl minus ions are present per unit cell of FCC in NaCl right that's first question second question he might ask number of ion pairs per unit cell number of ion pairs per unit cell that's one and even three, and even three, the mass of one unit cell. Look into the several types of questions which he is asking. Right? And this is for, for NACL, which has the shape of face centered cube. How many Na plus ions and Cl minus ions are present in one unit cell? That is the first question. Second question, how many number of ion pairs are present per unit cell is the second question. And the third question is the mass of one unit cell he is asking. 
right so this we need to answer now clearly please understand if i can draw the fcc for you observe carefully this is the cubic lattice this is the cubic lattice right this is the cubic lattice and remember if i can put the darkened circles to be this is na plus and this is what cl minus then i am writing here <coughs> na plus is occupying edge centered points edge centered points and and it is occupying the body centered points so let us plot here edge centered points this is the edge this is the edge and you have total 12 edges you have 12 edges mind you a cube will be having 12 edges and the sodium is occupying at the center of the edge people might ask me why is it occupying the center of the edge why not somewhere else as i told you these positions are taken naturally by the ions and what is natural here is when they sit in that positions you they experience minimum repulsions and maximum attractions and minimum repulsions and maximum attraction gives stability to the crystal because that is the arrangement where maximum energy is lost and stability and energy are inversely related you must understand so thereby the crystal is what stable this is why the sodium is occupying the edge centered point so if i can write it this is one edge centered point one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Those are the so, so, and eleven. Uh, one, two. This is to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So the total of twelve edge-centered points I have drawn. right that is where the sodium is sitting at the same time sodium even sits at the body center somewhere here at the center that's somewhere here right that's somewhere here now you might ask me why sodium need to sit at the edge centered and the body centered as i told you i am not placing them nor did i speak to them nor i forced them to occupy that positions that positions are the most comfortable positions where they experience minimum repulsions and maximum attractions that is when the energy is lost in the crystal that's where they attain what stability this is how you have to reason when someone is asking right and remember if that is the case then let us actually calculate as i said as i said this unit cell of fcc this unit cell cannot be isolated it cannot be isolated you can't take a unit cell and put it in your pocket you can't do that and a unit cell is surrounded by several other unit cells it's not an isolated entity when unit cell itself is not isolated the edge centered points are also not belonging to that particular unit cell so what i mean is one sodium atom sitting here doesn't belong it's not contributing full to that particular unit cell because it is actually shared by several other unit cells and let us calculate it let us calculate suppose if i take an edge centered point over there over there edge centered that is the edge right that is the edge centered point right and if that is the edge centered point that is shared by how many rooms this room where i am standing this unit cell where i am standing next to that i have one more unit cell right right next to that and on the top one and on the top one so four people actually four people this edge is common right this one and the top room the next room and the bottom room so remember so an edge centered point since it is shared by several other unit cells an edge can be shared by four unit cells four unit cells so one edge point is not totally contributing to it it is shared by four other unit cells so its contribution is only one fourth to a particular unit cell you must understand if a cake is shared by four people the contribution of cake to one person will be 1 by 4 it is as simple so the edge centered point is common for four unit cells this unit cell the top one the next one and the bottom one so that edge is common for four rooms or four unit cells 
So its contribution is only 1 by 4. So if I can calculate this for the edge centered points for sodium, look here. So Na plus will be having at the edge centers. So each one is contributing only 1 by 4. 1 by 4, each, each edge centered point will be contributing what? Only 1 by 4. And you have in a cube 12 edges. 12 edges. So each one is 1 by 4. So total 12 edges will be 1 by 4 into 12. That is 3 Na plus ions per unit cell. You must understand. Now what is very strange, if I count the total number of Na plus ions in the diagram, if you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 sodium ions actually we see. But they should contribute, if they are contributing whole, then it is 12 Na plus ions per unit cell. But it is actually only 3. Only 3 instead of 12 because each point is not contributing in full to a particular unit cell. It contributes only 1 by 4. You must understand. Right? That is one point. Coming to the body centered point. It occupies body centered point. Right? The body centered point is somewhere at the center. It cannot be shared by anyone. It's not touching the faces nor at the edges. You can see here. It's actually here at the center. So it is full contribution to a particular room. It's not shared by anyone. It's not shared by anyone. This is how it is. It is at the center. So it's full contribution. So I think 1 into 1, that is 1 Na plus per unit cell. So you can actually see, if I can calculate, total Na plus per unit cell. It is 3 plus 1, that is 4 Na plus ions. That is 4 Na plus ions. Even though, if you actually see, count the total number of sodium ions in this face centered cube, it is 12 plus 1, 13 Na plus ions. 13. And all the 13 are not contributing to one unit cell. In fact, it is only 4 sodium ions which actually contribute to one Na, one unit cell. You must understand. That is the case of what? Sodium. Now, if you come into chloride ions, then the chloride ion Cl minus is occupying the face centered point. Face centered points. Now what are face centered points, right? The chlorine is an empty circle which I'm now putting it, right? Face centered point. This is one face, a cube has six faces. If this board is a face, at the center you have what? Cl minus, Cl minus. So if I can draw it for you, then the faces are somewhat like this. This face, at the center you have one chlorine. Opposite face, you have one chlorine. Two are finished. This face, you have one chlorine. This side face, you have one chlorine. Remember, right? And on the top, you have one chlorine. And at the bottom, you have one chlorine. So those are the face centered points. You must understand. That means in this face, in this face, at the center, it is actually sitting. And who has forced the chloride ion to sit? No one has forced the chloride ion to sit. You must understand. They are sitting on their own. They are comfortable. They are having minimum repulsions, maximum attractions, enjoying happily. They lost energy. They are loving each other. More energy lost. And the crystal is stable. So don't ask the question, who have placed that? They are naturally, they are sitting in that position. We are not doing it by choice. Please understand that. So that is the Cl minus ions. So if you count the total number of Cl minus ions here, you have six chloride ions because six faces are there. But do all the six chloride ions belong to a particular unit cell? Absolutely no. Absolutely no. Look into this face centered. If this is the face, you have at the center Cl minus. One of the face or the wall of this room is common to two rooms. A wall is common to two rooms. It cannot be, it cannot be common to more than two rooms. Right? So a face centered point is common to what? Two rooms. So what we will do, a face centered point only contributes half. So each, each, each face centered point, 
is contributing only half to a particular unit cell because it is shared by two unit cells. So it's something like a cake being shared by two people. So each fellow will be getting only half. So a face centered point is shared by two rooms. So the contribution will be only what 50%. And the total number of faces in the cube are six. So into six, that is three CL minus per unit cell, you must understand. So the total contribution of the face centered points is three chloride ions per unit cell, even though they look to be six chloride ions in a unit cell, but the total contribution is only, only three chloride ions. You must understand that, clear I suppose, right? And then you have the corner points. They sit at corner points. Corner points, and where are the corner points? One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Those are the corners. Those are the corners. So you have eight corner points. Now let us see when you have eight corner points, does this eight belonging to that particular unit cell? Absolutely not. They don't contribute in full. So let us discuss how it can contribute. So if you can see here, there is the corner point, that corner point or this corner point, you can say of the board, this corner point, this corner point belongs to this room, right? This room, this room, next room, next room, the corner point is same, right? And then next to that room, next to that room. So it's almost like four portions, one, two, and three, and four, right? This point belongs to this room, next room, next to that, and next to that. So you're actually taking a square, right? One, two, three, and four. So all the four portions, this point is common. Not only that, if you put four portions on the top, four portions on the top, four portions here, if this is a corner point, one, two, three, four. For all these four rooms, this point is common. And if you put four portions similar on the top, so total eight rooms are sharing one corner point. It is eight rooms which share what? One corner point, you must understand. It is almost like a cake shared by eight people. So the contribution for, of the cake for the eight people is only one by eight, right? So corner points is only one by eight and you have eight corner points. So this is only one CL minus per unit cell, you must understand. So how do we read this? How do we read this? Edge centered points total contribution is only three sodium per unit cell. Body centered point is only one Na plus per unit cell. Face centered points contribute three chloride ions per unit cell. Corner points contribute only one Cl minus per unit cell. You must understand. Right? That is how they are sitting. So if someone is asking your brother or sister is asking you, can you explain the shape of NaCl? Then you tell them that when NaCl is crystallized, the sodiums are automatically sitting at these positions, edge centered and body centered. Chloride ions are sitting at face centered and corner points, you must understand, right? Corner points, you must understand that, right? And uh, not every point seen in this diagram belong to that particular unit cell. It is shared by what? Several other unit cells. And edge centered is shared by four. Body centered is shared by only one. Corner points are shared by eight. And face centered are shared by three. Right? If that is clear, then I think we should be in a position to answer these questions. You must understand. Let us answer the first question. Watch carefully here. The first question. Look into this. How many Na plus and Cl minus ions are present in one unit cell? That's what he's asking. So in one unit cell, in one unit cell of NaCl, we have, look into this, 4 Na plus comma 4 Cl minus per unit cell, you must understand. So 4 Na plus and 4 Cl minus ions per what? Unit cell, that is what is the contribution. And then the second question, number of ion pairs. Well, if you wanted the number of ion pairs, if you wanted the number of ion pairs, 
then it is like this. If you wanted the number of ion pairs, just take 4 common into Na plus NCl minus. So this means that 4 ion pairs. It is 4 ion pairs because this ion is 1 pair. So you have actually 4 ion pairs per what? Per what? Per what unit cell you must understand. For 1 unit cell you must understand that. Right? That is the second question. Now look into the third question. The mass of 1 unit cell. The mass of 1 unit cell if you wanted to calculate. Then 1 unit cell. 1 unit cell will have 4 Na plus comma 4 Cl minus. That's one unit cell. That's what we told. Now one mole of unit cells will have one mole unit cell. Then it is four moles Na plus and four moles Cl minus. You must understand. One unit cell has four sodium atoms and four Cl minus atoms. So one mole unit cells will have four moles Na plus, four moles what Cl minus. And now so the mass of one mole unit cells is equal to 4 into a mole of unit cell is 23 mu atomic mass unit because atomic mass of sodium is what 23 plus 4 into 35.5 amu you must understand so this is uh, 23 into 4. So 23 into 2 is 46. This is 92 AMU. AMU plus 71 into that is 35.5 into 2 is 71. 71 into 2 is 142. 142 AMU. So total is 234 AMU is the answer. So the mass of uh, one mole of unit cells is basically 234 AMU, you must understand. So ultimately this is what we wanted to tell you, a mole of unit cells of NaCl has a mass of 234 AMU, you must understand, right? So that means that if you put 6 into 10 power 23 unit cells in a, in a mass unit, then I think the total mass is basically coming to be 234 atomic mass units. That is a mass of 6 into 10 power 23 unit cells. You must understand that, right? Based on this, there will be derivative questions also. For example, what he will do is this. Calculate the number of unit cells in 2.34 amu mass of NaCl. Calculate the number of unit cells in 2.34 AMU of NaCl. Then we must understand, we know, we know, what do we know? 234 AMU is the mass of one mole, one mole of NaCl, right? So 234 is the mass of one mole unit cells of what? NaCl. So that means that 234 AMU will be having 6 into 10 power 23. That is a mole. Right of unit cells. Right? So 6 into 10 power 23. Total mass of unit cells of 6 into 10 power 23 is 234 AMU. And he has given 2.34 how much? So that will be 2.34 into 6 into 10 power 23 by 234. So cancel it off. This is 100. So this is 6 into 10 power 23 minus 2. So, so this is 6 into 10 power 21 unit cells. You must understand. So to answer this question, first of all, you should understand the total mass of what? Unit cells, one mole of unit cells is basically what? 234 AMU, you must understand, right? So let us go and check out something else. So we know now we have an idea of a lattice, right? And we know we have an idea of what? A unit cell. 
Now what we will do, we will define what is lattice energy and we'll express it in form of an equation and we'll take some inferences and then link it to some of the questions which are asked in JEE. That is our aim now. Now what is basically lattice energy? Lattice energy according to me is basically the average force. I call this to be average force. So someone is asking you what is lattice energy? Right? If the best technical definition such that you can actually have it, it is a, like a precedent to express it in terms of uh, equation. The best definition which I have chosen for you is for a better understanding is an average force. So what is lattice energy? It's nothing but an average force, right? Average force that binds that binds oppositely charged oppositely charged ions in a lattice. So you must understand the average force that binds oppositely charged ions in a lattice. This is what is called a lattice energy, right? But otherwise you can say alternate definitions also. The energy required to break a lattice into its constituent ions. Now remember that this also means what I have written because the oppositely charged ions will be bound by what? Electrostatic forces and the energy which you use to break these ions into the constituent ions from the lattice can be called as what? Lattice energy. But otherwise also what we can say is the energy released when a lattice is formed by its constituent ions. So you have three ways to understand this. Now if I can write it, then you can say energy required to break a lattice into what? Ions. Right, and you require an energy to break a lattice into its ions. That energy can be called as what? A lattice energy. Now, why you require energy? Because you have a force that is binding these oppositely charged ions in a lattice. That's what I mean by average force. Right? The average force that exists between oppositely charged ions in a crystal lattice can be called as what? Lattice energy. But otherwise also what you can write, you can simply say energy released. This is basically required, but you can actually say energy released when the lattice is actually formed from the ions. You must understand. So you can have three ways of understanding what is lattice energy. Three ways of, uh, you know, defining lattice energy. Right energy required to break the lattice into its ions. Or, or, or energy released when a lattice is formed from its ions. But the best way to understand is the average force that exists or that binds oppositely charged ions in a crystal lattice is called what? Is called what? Lattice energy. This is what I can say is called lattice energy. Now, if that is the case, if I can write an expression for this, watch carefully, a general expression, right? Then what I understand is, lattice energy is nothing but force. That's what you're telling. Lattice energy is nothing but force. And force between oppositely charged ions is a Coulombic force. It's basically a Coulombic force. So the expression for Coulombic force can be K, a constant, and Q1, Q2 by R. You can understand that. Where R is a distance between the oppositely charged ions Q1 and Q2. I'm putting the magnitude, not the sign. Not the sign. Q1, Q2 are the charges on the opposite poles, you must understand. And R is the distance between these two, and K is a constant. Right? So remember that is the case. Then you, if this R can be replaced like this, so lattice energy can be called as a force. This is equal to K, Q1, Q2 by R can be distance. So RC 
plus RE. What is this RC plus RE? It's radius of cation and radius of anion. For example, if this is the cationic charge and this is the anionic charge, and if you wanted to find the distance between these two, that's nothing but you, this is an ionic distance, this is radius of cation, and this is the radius of anion. So the, the, this combination of RC and RA is nothing but the distance between these poles, you must understand that, right? You want me to explain, then I can explain it to you. If this is a cation, and if this is an anion, right? The radius of this cation, this distance is RC, and this distance is RA. So the distance between these two is a combination of these two RC plus what? RA. So the expression what is for lattice energy is basically nothing but lattice energy is K Q1 Q2 by RC plus RA. You must understand. So as a mathematics student, what I understand is, what I get from this expression is, I clearly understand that Lattice energy is inversely related to radius of cation, Rc, that's one thing. And also, lattice energy is inversely related to radius of anion, that is another thing, right? And in fact, lattice energy is directly proportional to Q1, Q2, that is the product of charges, you must understand here, right? So, it is, you know, when RC remains the same, RC is same, here it is, uh, uh, RC is what, same, here RA is what, same, you must understand. So from this expression, if I can actually postmortem is, radius and lattice energy are inversely related, radius and lattice energy are inversely related and directly proportional to the product of charges, this is what is the uh, expression postmodern. Now what I will do is basically get into some of these what applications of lattice energy. Let us discuss the first one, right? Observe carefully here. The very first one, observe. So let us see applications of lattice energy. And lattice energy is nothing but force that is nothing but a constant into Q1 Q2 by RC plus RA that is the expression what we have for lattice energy and when I write application number one application one then I call lattice energy and solubility These two are basically related. They are related. You must understand. Solubility of a substance and lattice energy are related. You must understand here. Right? If that is the case, how are they related? Look here. Look here. Now, if, how are they related? For example, you have an ionic compound, say AB. This is an ionic compound. That's an ionic compound. When you have this ionic compound, the fundamental particles in ionic compounds are ions. They are ions. Now, if you put this ionic substance in water, if you put this in water, look into the solubility. If you wanted to test AB is soluble or not, this compound is soluble or not, how would you judge? It is, of course, ionic compounds are soluble, but sometimes some substances are more soluble, some are less soluble. How do we actually gauge that is the issue. Now, if that is the case, then remember once you drop in water, these A plus and B minus, these two must lead, must lead independent existence. These, these two must lead independent existence. A is loving B. After all, they are oppositely charged ions. They love each other. They are great lovers. But when you put it in water, they must be separated and lead independent existence. A plus, A plus must not crave for, crave for B minus. B minus must not crave for A plus. Just because you are lovers. That can only happen 
when the positive charge on A and the negative charge on A is satisfied by a third person. Simply speaking, if the charges on A plus on A and B are satisfied or diminished, then A leads an independent existence, B leads an independent existence. They don't crave for one another for recombination. When they don't crave for one another, then, they, then we say it is dissolved and we celebrate for the formation of a solution. That is the technicality involved in dissolution. So, if you take an ionic compound, put it in water, they are separated and they must lead independent existence. That means the positive charge on A and the negative charge on A must be diminished and must be satisfied by a third person and the third person I am referring here is water. That means that first in first, these lovers must be separated. Forget about what happens later, but since ionic compounds have strong electrostatic forces between them, they, they must be first separated. They must be first separated because they are bound by certain force. This force itself is lattice energy. That force itself is lattice energy. So greater is the force of attraction, greater is the force of attraction, more is what? Lattice energy, you must understand. Greater is the force of attraction, average force of attraction, more is what? Lattice energy. Then the solubility is less because you are attracting each other very much. So separation of two great lovers would be difficult for me. So solubility falls. You must understand. So, 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 I can simply say lattice energy directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the solubility. Or simply speaking, simply speaking, lattice energy inversely related to solubility. You must understand. It's inversely related to what? Solubility. So, if the lattice energy is more, the loving capacity is more. To separate them is difficult. So, the lattice energy falls. You must understand. Now, how do you take an example and explain these things? Let us check it out by taking an example. Look here. If I can compare, if I wanted to compare MgO versus NaCl, I want to check whose lattice energy is more. Magnesium oxide versus NaCl. If you want me to check, then understand, then understand that you know lattice energy is what? Directly proportional to Q1, Q2 and RC and RA. So if I can write Q1, Q2, if I can write Q1, Q2 for this, then it is Mg plus 2 and O minus 2. So total is 2 into 2 is 4. The charge on magnesium is 2. The charge on oxygen is 2. Not the sign. It is a charge. So 2 into 2 is 4. And if I can write this Q1, Q2 for NaCl, this is just plus 1 and minus 1. So 1 into 1 is basically 1. 1 into 1 is 1. Clearly indicating that the product of charges are 4 times more for MgO compared to NaCl. On the top, I can simply say radius of magnesium ion is in fact very smaller compared to Na+. And the, when the radius is small, the lattice energy would be more. Radius is small, the lattice energy is more. You can understand. Lattice energy inversely proportional to the radius. Smaller the radius, more is what lattice energy. So all in all, all in all, if I combine both, you can actually see, you can actually see the Q1, Q2 is four times for MgO compared to NaCl. On the top, Radius of magnesium is smaller than radium of Na plus, radius of Na plus. It indicating, it implies, basically it implies, it implies, right, it implies, here, it implies that lattice energy of MgO is almost four times more then NaCl, the lattice energy is too much for MgO 
compared to NaCl and when lattice energy is more the solubility will be lesser so it implies that lattice so solubility of MgO is far lesser compared to NaCl you must understand this is a question which is asked let us explain again the same thing let us explain again the same thing what we are telling right let us explain is basically lattice energy is inversely related to solubility inverse right so if I can compare MgO versus NaCl then I can simply say Q1 Q2 which is 2 into 2 which is 4 and 1 into 1 that is 1 because this is plus 1 minus 1 plus 2 minus 2 right and even radius of mg plus 2 is smaller compared to Na plus so all in all on an average lattice energy of MgO four times greater than lattice energy of NaCl so even solubility of MgO is far less than solubility of NaCl that is how we analyze if any question is given you must understand if any question is given I think you followed what I said so lattice energy is inversely related to solubility this is application number one you must understand